So it looks like we have our first victim of this whole short barrel rifle, pistol brace. What do we, do we even know what it means? I'm not talking about us, I'm talking about the ATF. They preyed on someone who served honorably in the Navy, took all the stuff, and now they won't give it back. Everyone, big thanks to Smith & Bradley for sponsoring today's video. Smith & Bradley makes exceptional watches for exceptional men. And they design their watches to last a lifetime, whether you're underwater, in tactical situations, in the woods, pretty much anything. Smith & Bradley watches do not break. Now this one that I have on is their Sans 13 tactical watch. It's worn by Larry Vickers, Mr. Guns and & Gear many more. Now, I'm a huge watch guy. I absolutely love this thing. But almost more important than the watch is the company behind the watch. They guarantee their product, which means that if anything happens to this watch, you give them a call and they will make it right. So they got a bunch of different watches for any occasion. There's going to be a link below the video. Go grab you one of the best watches today. Everyone, welcome back. Hope everyone's doing well. As always, if you love the Second Amendment, if you believe that your rights should not be infringed on, make sure you subscribe. So a couple months back, I did a video on a guy who served honorably in the Navy and who was at a gun shop. <laughs> Boom. The ATF shows up. They are there for the gun shop, not him. But what happens when the ATF shows up and you're in the general vicinity? Well, They'll shoot your dog, that's for sure. And they'll also probably go over and question you, and if you have a gun on you, God help you. You could have all the best documentation in the world, you could have literally any story that you want, they're probably still going to take your guns. If I were you, I would feel like, man, I was just in the wrong place, the wrong... and that's exactly what it was. Not, no one tricked you, or you weren't lured there, we didn't have some undercover operation to try to lure you in. We solely had an arrest warrant, for that other guy okay. that you met, and I don't even know him, it's not my case, I wouldn't even there. We weren't there for you, but my understanding is we don't even know who you are. So, he ended up reaching out to me and he gave me an update as far as what's going on with this case, and I gotta tell you, it is pretty sickening. So just a quick recap. They seize his weapons. They tell him, oh, well you're probably at the wrong place at the wrong time, and you gotta contact this person, and well, the supervisor says this and this, and you gotta call her to get all your stuff back. Um, I think it just happened to be an unlucky situation where in the 30 seconds that our guy's rolling up, you happen to be meeting this guy about some stuff has nothing to do with him right. whatsoever. We will not, you will never be added to his case. You're not gonna be lumped into some category that he's in. It has nothing to do with him whatsoever. He just happened to be standing I guess this far away whenever right. we showed up to arrest him for an arrest warrant, okay? That's the extent of that. You're not uh, all of a sudden a defendant in whatever he's doing or anything like that. As of this time, you're not charged with anything. Wait a second. If I'm at the wrong place at the wrong time, just give me my stuff back. Right? Like, oh great, you guys think that you're doing God's work at the ATF, whatever. But I didn't do anything wrong, so just give me my stuff back. For some reason, that's impossible for the ATF to understand. Now, it's gotten even worse. He goes and files a petition to get his stuff back. Guess what? It was denied. And guess what it was about? These short-barreled rifles, or a pistol AR or one with a brace. Couple of months before this whole new rule went into effect. Allow me to read. The controlling factor in this matter is that the subject firearm is classified as a short-barreled rifle under the NFA. Because this firearm is not registered under federal law, it is illegal for any person to possess the property. Okay, so based on what he has documented, he has all of the tax stamps for all of his NFA items, his suppressors, his short-barreled rifles, all of it. But uh, if you have her email, she's the one that you would be in communication with. So basically, they're saying that I was there to snitch on myself, right? When in fact, I was there to present them the approved tax stamp for the suppressors and everything else, every, every pay, proof of ownership, just so I can get my stuff back. Uh, that's what I was there for. So then the question becomes, and this is going to be really hard for the ATF to understand, because you usually just charge people for doing illegal stuff. If you had the time to write it up in a letter saying that it's illegal, why haven't you charged him? Uh, maybe because all of this stuff is legal and you probably are just claiming the whole, oh, well, 
you know, we don't have that information, so we'll just send him out this letter and see if he just goes and takes a hike. This is what the ATF does. They send these letters out and they hope that someone can't afford an attorney. If you can't afford an attorney in a situation like this, you're done. You're not winning against the ATF, even if you were morally correct. They don't care, they have no morals. So he went and did the appeal and they said, well, he didn't do it on time. Really? Okay, let's look at this whole situation. You take someone that doesn't belong to you. That's it. This is the same as if some robbers came and robbed him, except it'd probably be easier to get them back from them than from the ATF. You have them put in a petition. You say, oh, well, it's a short barrel rifle and it's illegal, even though he has all the tax stamps. Then he puts in an appeal and you say, well, you didn't do it in time. Is this a joke? And mind you, this is after a whole conversation that he had a couple of days after the incident with more ATF agents. Listen to this. Man, I don't run you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I can run some cases, but I don't get to just choose like, hey, go get this man his property and give it back. I'm sorry, I cannot. You know, I personally am a fan of taking pride in what you do for a living. Even as an ATF agent, you are going to a new low. You're telling me that your agency and your area can take someone's property. You're admitting on video that he did nothing wrong, but you're saying, well, I don't, I don't have the authority to return stolen property. Dude, make a phone call. Is it really that hard? Hey boss, hey, look, we're the ATF, we get away with a lot, but this dude is actually innocent and uh, we need to return his stuff. So I'm gonna send him over to your office, stop playing with his guns and uh, return them. But no, instead you wanna pull the whole, well, I don't, I don't do anything here. What are we paying you for then? I mean, isn't this absolutely nuts? And this is all legal. Can you imagine what they're gonna do to people with this whole pistol bray stuff? If the ATF takes your weapons, no matter how legal they are, what we're learning from this situation and from a few others is that you're not getting them back. It doesn't matter if clear as day, you have the tax stamps for your NFA items and that all of them are legal. They would rather say, no, no, no. I mean, we found them in your Tesla and you were in the parking lot of the place that we wanted to raid. So no, you don't, you don't get your stuff back. You know what that is? That is simple robbery. Let's forget the guns for a second. This man had at least 25 grand based on the guns that I saw taken from him. Forget the guns, 25 grand. Let's say he had 25 grand just sitting in his Tesla. An ATF agent reached in and took it and said, well, you're at the wrong place at the wrong time. So we're just, we're gonna take this and we'll decide whether or not to give it back, but you have to call the supervisor and then she's gonna tell us not to give it back. That's what happened. It's absolutely sick.